everyone, welcome to Storytime. I'm Miss Teresa, and today we are going to read some stories about bath time. And these two stories have two different characters who want to take a tubby, and then another character who just does not want to get into that tub. And let's start with him first. And the story is called Pirates Don't Take baths. And here's our little piggy pirate and he's not looking very happy. So let's take a look inside and see what happens. Pirates Don't Take Baths by John Segal. No, no, no! I'm not taking a bath. Not tonight. Not tomorrow. Never. <gasps> Never? Never, ever, I'm a pirate, and pirates never, ever take baths. They plunder, they pillage, they sail the seas in search of treasure, but they don't take baths. There's a little pig, and I think Mom is going to have a hard time getting him in the bathtub. Oh, pirates don't get seasick either, but you do. Uh-oh, Mom has a point. Look at little Piggy on that pirate ship. He doesn't look like he's feeling so well. Mm, okay, okay, then I'm a cowboy. A cowboy? I'm a range riding, cattle driving cowboy. They don't take baths either. So there's Piggy, not a pirate anymore. He's on the ground and he's a cowboy. Uh-oh, I think mom has another point. Look at Piggy out there with all those cows. Maybe not, but cowboys don't mind sleeping on the hard, cold ground. Do you? Uh-oh. Look at poor little piggy down there. He doesn't look very comfy. I think mommy's right. I don't think little pig is cut out to be a cowboy. <gasps> Fine. I'm an Eskimo. They can't bathe. It's too cold. There we go, I think little pig might win this argument. It's too cold to take a bath. Mm, yes, but do you know what Eskimos eat? Uh-oh, whale blubber and walrus liver. Ugh, blubber and liver, that's gross. Oh, there's the little pig. I don't think he's going to be an Eskimo for very long. He doesn't like their food. So let's see. What about a knight? Armor can't get wet. It rusts. Good idea, little pig. Yep, good idea. You'll need that suit of armor to protect you from fire-breathing dragons. Uh-oh, look at that big dragon. And look at little pig. Forget it, I'm off to the desert. There's no water there. Oh, let's see, I think mom has another point. Let's see, she says, you're right. There's not much water in the desert for bathing or drinking. Oh, and look at little piggy. He's riding that camel, but he's looking very, very thirsty. Yeesh! I'm an astronaut, okay? Tell me, how do you take a bath in zero gravity? Mm-hmm, little piggy has mommy now. Uh-oh. It is hard to bathe in zero gravity, but it's hard to poop and pee in zero gravity too. 
Oh, there goes mom again, and I think she has a good point. Look at poor little piggy out there floating in space, looking just a little bit nervous. Maybe a little bit like he needs to head to the bathroom. <sighs> now what? I'm a treasure hunter. Oh, there's the little pig, and I think he's getting a little bit upset with mom. She keeps telling him about all of his different ideas and how they just won't work. But there he is. He's got his wheelbarrow and a shovel and a pickaxe, and let's see what he is digging up. Hmm, a treasure hunter. I know where to find treasure. Ah, huh, look what mom has in her hands. You do? Yes, I do. What has mom given little pig? Looks like he has flippers and goggles and a snorkel and maybe a bathing suit. <gasps> there goes little pig. He's diving down. He goes past all the fishies and the swordfish and the sharks. And he's way down close to where that lobster is. And there's the treasure. He brings it back up past sharks and fishies and an octopus. <gasps> Eureka! There's little piggy exploring the ocean right in his very own bathtub. It looks like mommy finally got little piggy into the bath. That is the end. What a silly story. Poor little piggy. He was trying to get out of taking that bath, but mommy was determined to get him into that bathtub. And he finally ended up having a lot of fun swimming for that treasure in the bathtub. And while little piggy didn't want to take a bath, we're about to meet three sisters who just are dying to take a bath. This is one of Miss Teresa's favorite stories, and it's called Tub Time. And when she was little, Miss Teresa and her younger sister used to go to the library all the time. And my sister brought this story home, and I ended up reading it to her, and I loved it. In fact, every time we went to the library, Miss Teresa used to get her sister to take it out. Not really for my younger sister, but more for me. So I'm very excited to share tub time with you. Tub Time by Elvira Woodruff. The O'Malley sisters loved mud. Marty liked to make mud cookies, mud pizzas, and all kinds of mud candy. Maggie liked to build mud castles. And Molly O'Malley loved to throw mud. She would throw it in the air and on the ground, and when no one was looking, at Murphy, her dog. You see Murphy in the background with a big lump of mud on his head. Unlike her children, Mrs. O'Malley had no love for mud at all. She hated it. And when her girls came in from playing, she would take one look at them and say, Tub time! So into the clean white bathroom, the very muddy O'Malley sisters would march. They loved the tub almost as much as the mud. One day, when they came home muddier than ever, Mrs. O'Malley called to them from the kitchen. Please start the tub while I answer the phone. I'll be right up. It was Aunt Minnie on the phone, and Aunt Minnie liked to talk. And there's Mrs. O'Malley talking to Aunt Minnie on the phone. 
May we have bubbles? Maggie called down the stairs. Be careful, not too many, Mrs. O'Malley answered. And look at Mrs. O'Malley is still on the phone. Minnie, I really must go now, Mrs. O'Malley said into the phone. But Aunt Minnie was describing her recipe for the best tuna casserole you've ever tasted. And she didn't want to hang up. Look at the girls. Uh-oh. I think there might be a lot of bubbles. Marty poured the bubble bath into the water, and the three O'Malley sisters climbed in. Are you all in the tub? Is everything all right? Mrs. O'Malley called up to them. Yes, we're all in the tub, Marty answered. And everything is fine and bubbly, Maggie giggled. Hey! We forgot our new bubble pipes, Marty shouted, and she climbed out of the tub and got them down from the shelf. Look at all of those bubbles. The three sisters dipped their pipes into the bubbly water. Maggie threw a handful of suds at Molly, and it landed on her head. Hey, Molly looks like a chicken! Maggie laughed. Bok, bok, bok! Molly flapped her arms and pretended to be a chicken. Then Molly blew into her bubble pipe, and she blew a bubble like no other bubble the O'Malley sisters had ever seen. It was a very big bubble, and it was full of chickens. Six squawking, wing-flapping chickens, to be exact. <gasps> Look at that bubble with all those chickens. The great chicken bubble wobbled this way and that. It floated toward the sink. All the O'Malley sisters looked at the giant bubble and then down at their pipes. Suddenly they realized that these were no ordinary bubble pipes. These were extraordinary bubble pipes. Frogs! How about some frogs? Little leaping green frogs! Marty grinned. She reached for her pipe and blew with all her might. Sure enough, the giant bubble coming out of Marty's pipe was full of frogs. Twelve high-jumping, long-leaping frogs. Oh boy, yelled Maggie. How about an alligator? A big, fat, teeth-chomping alligator. She reached for her bubble pipe and blew the longest bubble yet. It was as long as the tub and was filled with the meanest, hungriest-looking alligator the O'Malley sisters had ever seen. When the alligator saw the squawking chickens, he swished his powerful tail this way and that. Soon, his great wobbling bubble was floating straight for the chickens. Uh-oh, I hope. Everybody can stay in their bubble. <gasps> Terrified, the chickens flapped their wings wildly. As their bubble wiggled and jiggled about the room, the alligator opened his giant mouth. This set the chickens to pecking. They pecked and pecked until finally they pecked their way right out of their bubble. Suddenly, there were chickens everywhere, and the O'Malley bathroom was a sea of fluttering feathers. <gasps> Look at all those chickens! And there are feathers and bubbles everywhere. It didn't take the chickens long to peck a hole in the frog's bubble. Frogs began leaping over feathers, and feathers began flying over frogs. And everyone was trying to stay away from the alligator.
Downstairs, Mrs. O'Malley was still on the phone with Aunt Minnie. <sighs> yes, Minnie, I do want to hear about your vacation, but I must check on my girls. She held out the phone as she called up the stairs. Are you all in the tub? Is everything all right up there? Uh-oh, I think Mom needs to get off the phone and check on those girls. Yes, we're all in the tub, Maggie called down. But everything is not really all right, Marty whispered as she peeked over the edge. The alligator was now the only one left in a bubble, and he was not very happy. As he floated past the tub, the three little O'Malley's sank down into the suds. The alligator grinned as he headed for the hook next to the shower. Uh-oh. That alligator gets to that hook. That bubble just might go pop. Let's see what happens. Oh no, cried Marty. He's going to break his bubble, cried Maggie. Quick, the window, called Marty. Open the window. In a flash, the three O'Malley's were out of the tub, slipping and sliding their way across the floor. They opened the window and the frogs, feeling a cool breeze, leapt out. In a great flurry of feathers, the chickens followed the frogs. But the alligator was still in his bubble, quietly circling the room. He looked down at the little O'Malley's and then over to the large hook on the wall. He had a hopeful look in his eye. Actually, it was a very hopeful and hungry look, for it was well past his dinner time. Uh-oh. Suddenly, there were footsteps on the stairs. It was Mr. O'Malley who had come home from work. Bath time's over, he called. No, cried Molly. Quick, the window, cried Marty. The three little O'Malley's leapt out of the tub and they pushed the alligator right out of the window just as their father came in. Are they all in the tub? Is everything all right? Mrs. O'Malley called up to her husband. And it looks like Mrs. O'Malley is still on the phone with Aunt Minnie. Yes, they're all in the tub, Mr. O'Malley called down. But it looks like a herd of elephants has been through this bathroom, he sighed. When Marty, Maggie, and Molly heard this, they looked at each other and grinned. Hmm, will you blow us a bubble, Dad? Maggie asked. Well, all right, but just one, Mr. O'Malley said as he picked up a bubble pipe from the floor. Should I make it a big one? He asked as he put the pipe to his mouth. Uh, oh, Daddy was just talking about elephants, and now he's going to blow a bubble. Oh, yes, squealed the three O'Malley's. It will have to be a very big bubble. They giggled as they dove under the suds to hide. Meanwhile, downstairs, Mrs. O'Malley was still on the phone with Aunt Minnie. As the ceiling shook like thunder overhead, Mrs. O'Malley just closed her eyes and smiled. Look out the window. Look at what's floating outside. I see two, maybe three elephants in a very big bubble. Yes, Minnie, it's all right. You can go ahead and tell me all about it. That noise? 
Oh, that's probably just my girls. They must be all out of the tub, she smiled. I don't think Mrs. O'Malley knows what's going on up there, and only the doggy can see the elephants. Poor Mrs. O'Malley, she missed all the fun. Because that is the end. I, that was one of my favorite books, and I hope you enjoyed it. So until next time, I'll see you later.